Hey everybody, Joseph Christ here at Four Player Network here at PAX. I'm here with Dimitri Ryder of Metro. Yeah, Dimitri Glukowski, the author of Metro 2033 and the writer of uh, Metro Last Light. How you doing? Having a good time? Yeah, I'm doing great. First time at a video gaming convention. Very impressive. Is it much different than, than book conventions or is it uh, a lot, yeah, lot more dressing up maybe? W w well, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit like maybe three times bigger than any the biggest convention in Russia. Mm -hmm. And I know this is three times smaller than E3, mm -hmm. but I'm still impressed. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good time. We have fun here. We try yeah, to have fun. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the new game, Metro Last Light, uh, based on sort of the dark ending of the first game, but a continuation. So where, does, where are we going now with the, yeah. with the story? For so uh, just, just in case that not all of your uh, spectators mm -hmm. see, see have seen the first part, uh, it's set in the post-nuclear Moscow, post-nuclear world, the world devastated by the World War III, mm -hmm. where the remnants of the mankind are refuging in the tunnels and stations of the subway system of Moscow, which is the world's biggest nuclear shelter. Mm -hmm. So 20 years on, they still cannot get back to the surface because the <coughs> surface of the Earth is contaminated mm -hmm. with radiation and infested with monsters. Mm -hmm. So they stay there. And the system of uh, well, well the public transportation has turned into a little world. Mm -hmm. Different stations have turned into city-states, actually, with their own ideologies, mm -hmm. uh, beliefs, like religions, everything. They fight each other. They have very tense relations. Mm -hmm. They've got different factions, uh, including underground communists and underground Nazis. Mm -hmm. And people usually get like very curious where like, w WTF, the Nazis, are doing there mm -hmm. in Moscow. Mm -hmm. I just tried to reduce the entire world to the scale of the subway. Sure taking the greatest ideologies, the most controversial ideologies of the 20th century, mm -hmm. and putting them into the subway, like putting in different stations. Because right. people would be just going down there with their initial ideologies, yes, with their initial exactly, thoughts. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So it's a reduced model, actually, of the entire world, mm -hmm. what remains of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, those people who live in the metro are never <laughs> sure. They ignore him, he's yeah. being silly. <laughs> <laughs> Your producer tells me to, to talk less. No, 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 so no. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. So any anyway, um, in the first game, the main character actually was facing, a part of all those Nazis and communists was facing a uh, new mutant race called the Dark Ones, which look pretty much like human, but are like all covered with this uh, slick black skin, black eyes. So and they're, they're actually they are the opposite of human beings, and they they have this telepathic force. They they project fear and disgust. Mm -hmm. And the first reaction, the immediate response, when a person sees them, would be to strike first before they can get to you. Mm -hmm. So the main character of the first game is actually fighting them. He f believes that in order for the mankind to return to the surface, he has to win a war against the dark ones, mm -hmm. only to discover in the end mm -hmm. that. These are not the enemies. These are th very different creatures, but you can communicate with them. And so instead of becoming a hero, a war hero, he needed to be an interpreter. Mm -hmm. He needed to bridge the two worlds, to, to bring the two races together. Instead of that, he actually eradicates them, launches missiles, and devastates their nest, killing off every second, every single of them, as he thinks back then. So he's a, he's a mass murderer. Mm -hmm. He has just p performed a genocide. And that's the ending of the first game. And uh, the second game begins with the fact that maybe just one Dark One has survived that. Mm -hmm. And uh, burdened by guilt taken from the first part, he has to venture now into the subway system once again to bring this, to find this on the survivor and see how he can actually help save the world of Metro. Mm -hmm. Because there is a civil war beginning between all the factions, among all the factions. Right. And if it's not prevented, it can actually like, burn out the entire system of Metro killing the lost survivors okay. on Earth. So he, he thinks of bringing back this 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 last Dark One will kind of bring the people together. Or not. Or not. Or, or not. Or, just or not. <laughs> the, the first mission that the, the main character of the game will get is to kill Dark One, mm -hmm. kill the, the last survivor. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we actually starting the game, with this mission to kill it. And uh, then, then it depends on the player, actually, on the gamer, what will happen next. You know that the first game had a this system of hidden karma points mm -hmm. that you were not actually ever introduced to, but that kept counting your like actions, whatever you did, uh, it and it actually estimated and evaluated the behavior of the gamer, unlocking a very much hidden good ending to the game, w to which only three percent of the gamers ever 3%, got ever wow. got to. Wow. 
Yeah, among them, your cameraman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so every, every, everybody else, like 97% actually got to the bad ending, destroying the dark ones. Right. But if you were curious enough and peaceful enough and exploring enough and intelligent enough and, uh, w w well, just not shoot and run mode, mm. but the talk and listen mode too, then you could unlock this good ending. And uh, but but it's also those who did unlock that were in total mi minority. Uh, are you uh, bringing back that karma system into this? The new this is going to be continued. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, so um, and, uh, all in all, this this is more. It's not not just your regular game. I would say so. I didn't. I wouldn't really even speak of it as a, as a, as a game. It's an experience. Right. And when I was I was I was writing the plot and the dialogue, I was doing that as seriously. As I would be doing that I if I wrote a, a, a book, excuse me, or or a, or a screenplay for a movie, mm -hmm. so it's really mature and really dramatic, and uh, it has actually far more of a story than a shooter can allow itself to have. Right. So, yeah, how much uh, in terms of branching storylines is that something that's extremely uh, prevalent in this game? Um, do your choices sort of branch you out pretty significantly from the main track a lot of ways? Well, it's still a linear shooter. Sure. sure. Yeah, but. Uh, Depends. Like you, you can just shoot and run again, but then you will miss a huge part yeah. of the story. Because yeah. like when I when I was writing the dialogue, uh, I introduced like tons of characters that surround you that make sure that this feels real, mm -hmm. and it's not the Call of Duty -ish type of a game where the plot is only needed to well whatever to fix the action. Right. A to B. And or that's or about well, I wouldn't yeah. even say that big part of shooters ha even have plots. You know. Here we uh, try to create as many living characters, not NPCs, but living characters, li living persons, mm -hmm. and populate the world of Metro. Because like, Metro 2033 and Master Last Light, th their, their unique selling point is that they have a living world in them. You know, it's not a bombastic, uh, right. whatever special effects, or not a soundtrack by Jay Z that that, that is <laughs> good in this story. Yeah. It's the story itself. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to create as many characters with it real psychology and real drama stories hope hopes dreams fears mm -hmm. you know and and then you, you so if you're not just shooting and running if you stop for a while to talk or to listen mm -hmm. you will you will really get like the real immersion to that uh, world yeah even like in metro 23 when you first go to that survivor's area the very beginning of the game and you begin meeting all the characters and watching how they live and just seeing the characters just sort of s uh, sitting around fires and telling stories and playing songs. Th that's a really great that moment. In the fr that's yeah. a great moment in the first game because you, you immediately re realize that this shooter's going to be a little bit different. Yes, and, th 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 and this game is in the same line. Mm -hmm. So you got those stations where you cannot just kill people because they're peaceful, basically, but you can spend quite a lot of time just watching them. There are, I don't know, the, the reincarnation of the Russia's biggest theater, the Bolshoi Theater, which was turned into a vulgar cabaret, you know, and uh, just, just striptease and, and, and whatever, like bitches, <laughs> uh, blackjack, and <laughs> 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 like the, the dream of Bender. Anyway, uh <laughs> uh, and, 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 and it has like a lot of detail that you will enjoy if you just play in a bit like thinking and relaxed way. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, what I played here is, is great so far. And well, yeah, and actually it was even that big a story that it didn't, I couldn't fit it all a, in the framework of a video game, so sure. I decided to create a, ba a, l a book based on it. Mm -hmm. So the story of Metro Last Light is going to be th also the story of an upcoming title called Metro 2035, the you know novel. We actually noticed that novel in the demo on someone's desk. Yes. And we started asking, wait, is he writing a new book? Uh, yeah, so I there I I and there's a funny part about it. Mm. Uh, it is that no American publisher actually wanted to publish oh the really? book. <laughs> the book is a success, like selling millions in Europe, mm -hmm. but American publishers said, like, who cares in the States about no. that story? Like, Amer American readers do not want to hear about it, or like, it's too exotic. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go self publishing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the book is now on Amazon, and uh, uh, what's going to happen next? I'm going to just give a free PDF ebook mm -hmm. to everyone who will be buying the. PC box. Oh, great! It's gonna be recorded on the disc. Mm -hmm. I decided just to, to 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 give it away. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's. I don't think that we're so different after all. You know, I don't think that the American reader cannot appreciate a story set not in New York, yeah, but right, elsewhere, right. but like beyond the ocean. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the, the planet is round. It's not just. It's just not. In just America. the states, yeah, yeah. 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 The states is not the globe. Some you know. Americans <laughs> have trouble realizing that, but uh, yeah, well, the I internet I is slowly slowly bringing us all together. No, actually, actually, <laughs> video games. I believe that video games help 
people con convert yeah. gamers into readers. Mm -hmm. Oh and yeah, uh, my, my next move would be to, to create a video game based on Dostoevsky or mm -hmm. Tolstoy. Right, 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 right. Some good mystery thriller. My question, actually, can you play Metro Last Light in the original Russian or in Russian? Yes, you can. You can. You can. You can. Right. Subtitle. Yes. Excellent. We were hoping for no, that. It, because it likes r it's like really weird when you see the characters in Russia speaking English with a Russian accent. Like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> 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 no, uh, Russians do speak English and with a Russian accent, but when they're in the States, but when they're yeah. back home, they speak Russian. You right, know. Right. I, I actually suggest in the beginning, so that the, 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 the characters are voiced by American actors, mm -hmm. and they just, it's like voiced, you know, sure. but, but, but for some reason it was not the case. Anyway, you will have the chance to listen to them speak in Russian and read the subtitles. Excellent. Well, we'll be, we'll be playing that way, just so you know. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Absolutely. And stay tuned to 4Player Network. Uh, more news from PAX East coming up. Cheers.